Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I need to level with you. Buying electronic components in 2022 is terrible. <laughs> designing a product right now is miserable. I remember a time when we were designing uninterruptible power supplies here. I was making electronic loads and we were buying hundreds of unique electronic components, just trusting that they could be purchased at any given moment. The electronic component supply chain is complicated and I'll own this, I used to take it for granted. There was also a time when I distinctly remember thinking something along the lines of this. Wow, DigiKey is just so convenient. How great it is to live in a modern world. Remember when making PCBs used to be difficult? Man, that must have sucked. Well, past Ryan, well, that's now your reality. Building PCBs is hard again, and it sucks, so... Let's talk about that. I want to give you a little piece of my perspective here. I've designed products on big teams for big companies. I've designed small products for small companies and I've designed small products for big companies. These hands have designed everything from a system on a module or a SOM to a simple op amp circuit. So then why am I in front of you complaining about how difficult it is to build a motor prototype? Well, chip shortages have been going on for a long time and you've probably heard about them. I can't say that I was just putting off building the next hardware for EE for everyone, but I also can't deny it. Let's just say that companies have different methods of figuring out this whole chip shortage, and people don't usually have those same levers to pull. Companies have the means to just buy 10,000 components directly from a manufacturer and then use them over the course of five years. I don't need 10,000 components. I need two and nobody, literally nobody cares about that. Well, except for me and maybe you, because you're some pretty great people and I'm glad that you're here. It gets lonely in the shop just talking about electronics by myself. So why don't you leave a comment down below just to say hi. I want to share my experience of trying to build a device that has a linear regulator, microcontroller, and motor driver on the same PCB. This should be easy, but it wasn't. It's no surprise to you or to me that I'm turning into a little bit of a Cypress PSOC fanboy. It's not like these parts are magic or anything. Cypress is just, in my opinion, the best vendor for allowing you to change parts in a product family without breaking everything in your code. That's great news for us because that means I can develop with the high power or high performance part and then scale down to its little brother reusing a ton of code between the advanced controllers like the brushless motor controller, and a simple DC motor. So that will be really great news for this project. But there's about a hundred reasons why being able to easily run the same code on two different parts is a really good thing. You may very well convince me to switch over to STM32 or TI before this series is done, but I'm not there yet. Getting to the point, I wanted to buy a Cypress PSOC microcontroller from the PSOC 4, 5, or 6 line. I've used parts from all of these families. They're good. It seems like PSOC 5 has been discontinued just kind of silently. You can still buy the parts, but they're not on the product page. Weird. Regardless, when I started designing this, there were two part numbers that had more than 10, the quantity 10, in stock. For every Cypress PSOC processor. We're not talking about one product family. We're not talking about like a particular chip that I wanted. I'm talking about every single processor they sell. This is ridiculous. Hundreds of part numbers. Hundreds of ordering options for those part numbers. Just none in stock. In a kind of twisted fate scenario, I am starting to have the opposite opinion that I used to have. Like when I see a part in stock, I start to think, hmm, What's wrong with this part? Because in the middle of a chip shortage, no one's buying it. Like, why don't they want this part? Which is bizarre. Like, usually being in stock is the mark of a good component. Well, the answer became obvious for one of these parts. One of these parts was a part number that was listed on DigiKey, Mauser, and everywhere else. It was listed in PSOC Creator as a target device, but it has been completely removed from the Infineon website. Weird. So I guess that one's out. The other part is totally reasonable. I mean, it's a BGA, so I might actually need to reflow this board. We'll talk more about that in our next video. But 
We might just need better than that old hot air gun. At any rate, here's a picture of the component I bought. And here's a picture of that same component with a banana for scale. Oh, sorry. That might be difficult to see. How about I give you a picture with that component and the tip of a pen for scale? For some context, this is a microcontroller with 25 pins on the bottom. Needless to say, this part is impossible to break out without micro vias, which is pretty unfortunate. Like when your pin to pin spacing is at your copper to copper restriction for a standard manufacturing process, that's it's brutal. Yeah, so I was using an unfortunately common technique these days. I ordered the parts and then was designing them in, and as I read the data sheet more and more, my heart just started to sink as I noticed their comments about needing nitrogen backfill to reflow correctly and epoxy underfill to prevent it from flying off a board. I started to realize this was no ordinary BGA. That's right, I accidentally ordered a wafer scale BGA. Oops. I guess that answers my question, though. This part is in stock because a lot of people can't put it on a board. Including myself. <laughs> this comes back to that problem, the, the first problem, right? There's less than 100 parts in stock for every other Cypress microcontroller. There was thousands of this tiny one no one can build, but there's like 10 of everything else. That means that by the time I design this microcontroller into our design, I just can't buy it anymore. My usual process of buying a development kit, authoring some firmware to gain confidence that the part will work in our application, then designing the board and putting it on it, and then pro it won't work anymore. <sighs> you have to remember, Quantity 100 is hardly a production run. If anyone else in the world needs this part, it's just gone for the next 60 weeks. And between you and me, I'd like to get this project done a little bit sooner than 60 weeks from now. And I guess that means we'll need to come up with another strategy. We'll need a new plan. I need you to know that I hate the words that I'm about to say. Because the behavior that I'm about to describe is exactly the behavior that is causing this chip shortage to last longer than it should. The only way that I can guarantee that we're going to be able to build our boards in a reasonable amount of time is to order the parts before I design the board, which is terrible because I won't know the exact quantity of parts I need. I won't really be sure if we need these parts, if they'll really work. And if I don't need these parts, they're just going to get scrapped instead of going to someone else who really needs them. This is the paradox of the chip shortage because people can't buy the parts that they need. So they start binge buying parts that they might need or don't need. And this just makes the chip shortage worse for everyone. <laughs> the companies buying thousands and thousands of parts to stock up for the next five years isn't helping either. And I'd like to say that I'm being the change that I'd like to see in the world, but I'm not. I bought the parts that we're probably going to need just in case we need them before I design the boards. I also need to apologize for something else because I know that I could have designed a better motor driver. And I also know that I wouldn't be able to build that motor driver after it was built. That's why I'm using a few vendors that I have literally never used in a design before. Like they are not tier one, tier two in my mind. It's like, it's like, oh, I didn't realize they made that. I thought they just made FETs. Oh, I guess they make ICs. Weird. Uh, but because if I wanted a DC motor controller that can operate at a motor voltage above five volts, none None were in stock from the usual vendors. <laughs> Likewise, I couldn't find a stepper motor controller. Likewise, I couldn't find a decent amplifier to monitor current shunts for measuring motor current. And therefore, we're going to have to build a couple simple boards that were designed to minimize unique component count and be built in the middle of this stupid chip shortage. I really wanted to do a brushless motor controller. I wanted to do field-oriented control, but that requires more precision analog parts, and my patience was just worn past zero. By the time I'd secured the parts just to make these two simple prototypes, like I had nothing left, and I'm sorry about that. This used to be the easy part of building a prototype. Like Buying the parts used to be the easy part, and the hard part used to be doing the analysis and design. We ended up buying whatever we could, and we're going to try to roll with it, and I think this is going to be a great series. I think we're still going to achieve a lot of our learning objectives, and I think we're still going to have a great motor controller. I mean, data sheets are data sheets and parts are parts, so if these parts conform to their specifications, it should be 
awesome. I'm just less confident in it than I usually would be because of the circumstances. I am very thankful for my growing collection of spare parts leading to the vials full of resistors and capacitors. At least I can supply the basic passive components, the resistors and capacitors that are now starting to go out of stock as well. To the world, I want to say, please stop panic buying components. I know my voice is small, and I know that everyone's probably going to ignore me, but this chip shortage probably isn't going to end until we all stop. Unfortunately, this commodity isn't just being purchased by general consumers like me or in the toilet paper crisis. This commodity is being purchased by powerhouse tech companies that have billions of dollars on the line. So I don't expect it to stop anytime soon. Thankfully, I already have the small handful of parts that we'll need to build these prototypes. Woo! So coming up next, we'll be setting up and trying a new assembly method, testing some hardware. Again, one of my objectives here is to bring this to the market. I would love for you guys to have this hardware in some form. And I just want to do a little bit of due diligence about some ways that we might be able to do a production run of like 10, 20. So I don't expect the volumes to be crazy here. As always, I'd like to give a special thank you to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step you've taken to support us directly. Thank you. I would also like to thank you all for your support through viewership, comments, sharing what we do with others, those who choose to watch ads, and those who are subscribed. It has been awesome and humbling to watch this EE for Everyone community grow, and that simply can't happen without you. Also, probably launching a community Discord, link down in the description. I'm finally doing it. Sorry it took so long. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for Everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.